In a spirit of joy-filled simplicity, the sisters endeavor by word and example to promote a community atmosphere conducive to growth in their spiritual life. This joy-filled simplicity flows from the very source and center of religious life, the Eucharist, the sacrament of love, the sign of unity, and the bond of charity. Well, being in the community for so many years and having worked at so many different jobs, so many different appointments, so many different things, I have to thank God every day for the wonderful sisters that I have to work with. This has been my gift, the gift that God has given to me. God gave me some great responsibilities in my life. And he always, though, even though he did that, he always gave me someone to work with, someone that I got along with, and someone that got along with me. <laughs> God arranged it in such a way that no matter what he gave me, I could always work with it and make it good for us, uh, make it good for me, make it good for the congregation, and make it good for my fellow sisters. That's important that a person takes care of her fellow sisters. What I most enjoy about community life and being in this congregation is the many times that we do spend together. I felt comfortable here from the very beginning. I, I just felt like this was felt like a home to me, a very welcoming place. The sisters were very friendly, very patient. You know, being new, you don't really know what to do in religious life. And I really knew very little about religious life. I, I felt very strongly that God was calling me here but I didn't really understand all the different things about religious life as far as the different stages of formation and, and all of that. And it didn't seem to matter. The sisters were very good to allow me to make my way through religious life. I enjoyed the sisters' joyful spirit, the times of recreation we'd spend together, um, doing simple things, sometimes playing a game or going for a walk or even just doing a craft or something like that. And we would talk and you know, share things about our day, about our life together. The kind of things we do in community is we play cards, we play games. At recreation, a lot of times we just relax and talk over the day with each of the sisters. Mostly it's, you know, we just help each other in many ways. I appreciated the simplicity of this congregation. That really struck me a lot. The joy I found, the peace I find in this life, you know, doesn't, can't be compared to anything else. In religious formation, the sisters go through the same process or steps, even though they may have gotten to that point on very different paths. By living in community life, they have a huge support network. The sisters are there to support the sister in need with their prayers and loving concern. Our focus is on Jesus, um, that's our aim. Living with other women who want to have the same aim, who are looking for something better than what the world has to offer. Everything we do, the fact that we even have our habit, we would look alike, we dress alike, and that we come together every day for prayers, for meals, and for recreation. It's like living in a big family, except our family is focused on Jesus. Um, we have to work a little bit harder on being more spiritual. We do our retreats together. We give each other advice. And we try not to criticize each other for even the mistakes that we make, because we are still human too. So we are going to make mistakes. So we have a deeper understanding of what we each want and what our aim to be, a true sister of charity. And then we take what we live together and we bring that out into our apostolates, the people we work with every day, the children that we teach every day. It comes across in who we are and how we work with other people. In community, the sisters have the opportunity to make sacrifices and learn about themselves. Sometimes it is in the offering up of sufferings inflicted on each other that they find the most joy. There is always someone for whom they can do an act of charity. The sisters live in God, 
and for God. For a while, I was a superior general of the community, and uh, I had such good sisters that um, it was no trouble to be superior of the sisters because they were so willing to help. They were dependable. My sisters always responded to the need that I had when I was superior. Our entire lives are given to Jesus out of love by everything we do, how we live our life, how we deal with each other. If we don't have the aim of doing everything for Jesus, we can't live this life. And our life is not just for here, our life because we have a better aim in view. And our aim in view really is to get to heaven. Being part of a religious congregation is like being in a family because in a family, you're accepted for who you are. You don't have to wear a mask. You know, day in and day out, you're together. You accept each other for who you are in all the different situations in life. And in a congregation, it's much the same way. You realize that we're all on that journey together and that God loves us for who we are. And in a community, it's like, you know, a mosaic. It's often compared to a mosaic because we all have our different colors, different shapes, but together we form a picture, you know, a work of art for God. The joys are many. Just being with each other, I can't even imagine not having a community life. Even when I go home, I want to be back with the community because it's just an enjoyable being with, being with each other. It's like the family. You're being with a family. The superior is like your own mother. The sisters are like your own sisters. If they had a tough day, they're with you. They'll tell you. If anything went wrong, they'll stay with you as long as you need any kind of help at all. Just knowing you're never alone. We're really here for each other, and, and that support never goes away. I know that I've grown a lot by being part of a religious community. You know, I've, I've tried things I've never tried before through the encouragement of others. In a community, you're never walking alone, and our hope is that we're all walking towards the kingdom of God together. And when we're there, we can only say it's due to God's grace and the gift of my sisters. If I were given a second chance to live this life, oh yes I would. I would certainly live this life again. I would not have any doubt or any consideration of anything else. It's always been a great joy to me to enter. I actually wished I had done it even earlier than when I did. And I entered when I was 18. I would have done it sooner even, if I knew then what I know now. The greatest joy I have from being a sister is hopefully it'll bring me to heaven to be a saint. These sisters here now in the community, in the congregation, are the people who are mine. And I have to help them, and I think, I know, they will help me to become saint. These are the people I have to work with. These sisters are my sisters. In general, by living in community, 
the sisters have the opportunity to live, pray, and work with their fellow sisters. Keenly aware that union with God thrives in an atmosphere of silence and recollection, the sisters make every effort to create within their convents that internal and external quiet which expresses to others the tangible presence of God. We are um, Sisters of Charity of Our Lady Mother of the Church, so devotion to Mary is at the heart of who we are. Devotion to Mary and her love of the Eucharist, I think those are the two pillars that drive and characterize our life. And it's natural because if we are spouses of Christ, why would his mother not be an important part of who we are? So I cannot imagine life as a Sister of Charity without a strong devotion to Mary. She's always been at the center of who we are. She's our model, so um, she's vital to who we are as Sister of Charity of Our Lady Mother of the Church. Our prayer life is really our whole life, and throughout the day we have prescribed prayers to say, because as active religious, we need to be in touch with the Christ to whom we minister and for whom we minister. And our holy rule helps us in that way, because there are specific prayers that we say at specific times during the day. And that doesn't preclude our doing things of personal devotion in addition to what is prescribed. The community prayers unite the sisters more closely to God and strengthen them in their service to Him. It is their lifeblood, the necessary means to holiness. As an act of obedience, it has double value, the prayers themselves and the act of obedience. Prayer is the spiritual food that the soul in love with God craves. As a Sister of Charity, we have um, we pray as a community, we have communal prayer, and we also have private prayer. And both are necessary. It's not either or, it's both and. We have that from the words of Jesus himself. He said, we're two or three gather in my name. He promised to be there. So it is important that the followers of Christ come together to worship and praise God. Communal prayer is vital to the life of any Christian and especially to uh, religious and ourselves as Sisters of Charity. And of course, private prayer, you really use your own words in prayer. In communal prayer, you're using somebody else's word. You know, the words of scripture in the Psalms or the words of the church. And that's all great, that's wonderful. But there comes a time when your heart needs to connect to your spouse's heart in your own words, in your own way. And sometimes it's in a wordless form of prayer because prayer is not always words. It's heart connecting with heart. And it is vital um, in order to grow in that spousal relationship. And if we really take that seriously and have that at the, as the focus and the forefront of our lives as we strive to do, poor sinners that we are, and sometimes we don't always make it as we would like, you know, make the mark as we would like it to be, but that is the goal. And if we keep running towards that goal, then we need to have time alone with the Lord to just be with Him in our own way, in our own words. So what impact does it have? Profound impact. There wouldn't be religious life without uh, private prayer. Prayer is so very important in the congregation. If we do not have our prayer life, if the sisters are not growing in their prayer life, in their spiritual life, in their union with Christ, the work that they do will not be profitable, will not have the blessing of God. 
we're religious and we do teaching. And so everything we do, we all know that it's for the love and honor of glory of God. We start the day with a morning offering. It's the Liturgy of the Hours, and uh, we pray that with psalms and hymns. And then we go right into either meditation or Mass. Each sister is asked to make a 30-minute meditation, and usually it's based on the Liturgy of the Day very frequently, or some other devotional book that a sister has. But then comes the central point of our prayer life, and that is the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. And then the sisters go about to do their works of charity, whether it's teaching, uh, taking care of our elderly, working with the sick, um, doing social work, working at the shelter, and so forth. In addition to those morning prayers, when the sisters do have a chance, they can pray what is called the daytime prayer. It's another prayer that we say using hymns and the uh, psalms 